Here comes an eye-opening journey into the heart of Israel's most perplexing occurrences. From unexpected twists in the weather to spine-tingling biblical prophecies coming to life, there are many terrifying events taking place in this holy nation. In this video, let's explore the truth behind these unsettling events and explore their implications for the future. Here we begin. The anticipation of the Third Temple, the idea of building the Third Temple holds immense significance for many, especially Orthodox Jews, who see it as more than just a physical structure. Rather, it embodies holiness and serves as a sacred site for worship surpassing the importance of the ancient temples that no longer stand. Despite its absence, anticipation for the Third Temple grows among Orthodox Jews, who consider it a central aspect of their faith. Since 1987, the Temple Movement has diligently prepared for the construction of the Third Temple. Despite living in an increasingly secular society, Orthodox Jews remain steadfast in their commitment to this cause. They have reinstated the Sanhedrin, a religious committee overseeing temple regulations and are devoted to rebuilding the temple according to their religious traditions. For Orthodox Jews, the reconstruction of the temple holds profound symbolic and transformative significance. They interpret Israel's return to its promised land and rebuilding of the Third Temple as the fulfillment of biblical prophecies articulated by prophets like Ezekiel and Isaiah. The prophets Ezekiel and Isaiah underscored God's promise to reunite his people with their land and eternally establish his sanctuary among them. In Ezekiel 37, 28, God declares, Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy when my sanctuary is among them forever. This highlights God's intention to bring the Jewish people back to their land under his guidance, fulfilling prophecies. Isaiah 43, 5, 6 further reinforces this promise as God commands, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. This indicates God's plan to gather his scattered people from all corners of the globe, emphasizing the divine orchestration of this reunion. Some may question the necessity of constructing the third temple, arguing that Yeshua, Jesus, serves in the true tabernacle in heaven. However, the importance of the holy temple transcends its physical form. It serves as a dwelling place for the divine presence of God. Exodus 25, 8 illustrates this notion as God instructs, Let them construct a sanctuary for me, that I may dwell among them. Ezekiel, the prophet, witnessed the departure of the divine presence from the temple, but also foresaw a future where an eternal dwelling for God would be rebuilt in Jerusalem. He proclaims, This is the place of my throne and the place for the soles of my feet. This is where I will live among the Israelites forever. This prophecy emphasizes the everlasting connection between God and his people, symbolized by his sanctuary established among them. The medieval Jewish philosopher Rambam stressed that the significance of the third temple surpasses mere historical reconstruction. It symbolizes God's eternal presence among his people. According to Rambam, the construction of the third temple isn't merely a reflection on the past, it serves as a tangible affirmation of God's enduring presence with his people throughout all time. Building the third temple signifies that God is constantly with his people, spanning from the past into the future. Discovery of the Pool of Siloam The Pool of Siloam stands as a significant historical discovery, measuring an impressive 53 feet in length, 18 feet in width, and 19 feet in depth, crafted with precision using natural rocks. It served as a vital water source for the people of Jerusalem. Unfortunately, it met destruction during Babylon's assault on the city in the Second Temple. However, it was rebuilt during Nehemiah's time and later expanded under the reign of Herod the Great. This pool was immensely important as a site where the impoverished and infirm sought healing, particularly during the Feast of Tabernacles, which commemorates the Israelites' liberation from Egypt. The Festival of Booths, or Sukkot, is a pivotal event in Judaism, symbolizing the Israelites' survival in the wilderness. Observers construct temporary sukkahs, akin to the shelters of their ancestors, to express gratitude to God and pray for rainfall. Sukkot is celebrated globally within Jewish communities. During Sukkot, a priest would draw water from the pool of Siloam using a golden pitcher, joyfully singing psalms. 
This water was poured on the altar's west side, a ritual linked to Isaiah 12, 3. This verse proclaims, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Pouring water during Sukkot symbolized drawing forth joyful water from the wells of salvation, creating a jubilant atmosphere during the Festival of Booths, with the Pool of Siloam playing a central role. Despite the original pool's destruction, its reconstruction allowed people to persevere in their celebrations and find joy in their traditions. Recent End Time Prophecy Fulfilled by Chinese President China's President Xi Jinping has recently made statements that have grabbed global attention, indicating a notable shift in China's foreign policy. His remarks are characterized by the use of metaphors and warnings, leaving many pondering their implications. Xi's rhetoric has been particularly striking, employing metaphors and language reminiscent of significant events, including wars and biblical prophecies. One instance that has sparked significant interest is Xi Jinping's reference to a scenario resembling Revelation 16, 12, 13, which depicts the drying up of the great river Euphrates and the emergence of impure spirits resembling frogs. These biblical allusions evoke thoughts of apocalyptic battles, raising questions about the true intentions behind Xi Xi's words. One must examine China's evolving foreign policy and military posture to grasp the context of Xi Jinping's statements. Historically, the Communist Party of China has prioritized economic development and diplomacy over military confrontation. However, recent developments suggest a departure from this approach. In the current year, China has adopted a notably more assertive stance globally, evident in its actions towards various countries, including Australia and its warnings regarding Taiwan. Moreover, recent threats such as the suggestion to shoot down an aircraft carrying a prominent U.S. representative visiting Taiwan underscore China's willingness to engage in confrontations. Xi Jinping's directives to top national security officials to prepare for stormy seas emphasize the seriousness of the challenges China anticipates. This heightened level of concern and the calls for worst-case scenario planning suggest a proactive approach to addressing potential threats. While it's crucial not to overinterpret these statements, they do reflect a growing sense of urgency within China's leadership. Recent reports have unveiled stringent directives from President Xi Jinping, highlighting the imperative for accelerated upgrades to China's national security system and capabilities. These efforts include the development of a comprehensive risk surveillance and early warning system, enhanced national security education, and fortified data and artificial intelligence security management. Xi Jinping's approach to national security is comprehensive, encompassing governance, economics, defense, culture, the environment, and cyberspace. This holistic strategy has led to the implementation of several laws and regulations to safeguard China against perceived threats. Moreover, Xi Jinping's directives extend to China's formidable military capabilities, which include the world's largest army. References to biblical prophecies such as those found in Revelation 16 have sparked speculation about the potential role of China's military in future conflicts. The Book of Revelation, penned by the Apostle John, offers intriguing insights into potential future conflicts. One such depiction is of a massive army of 200 million soldiers emerging from the East, while interpretations of these prophetic visions vary. They prompt many to contemplate the significance of such immense forces and their potential role in historic battles. Recent snowfall in Israel in recent days, Israel has experienced an unexpected shift in weather, with snowfall transforming landscapes across the country. On a chilly Wednesday morning, residents of the Golan Heights in northern Israel woke up to a breathtaking sight. Their surroundings were blanketed in a thick layer of snow. This picturesque scene extended to higher elevations in central Israel, including the historic city of Jerusalem, creating an enchanting winter wonderland reminiscent of a fairy tale. Their emergency rescue and medical teams were on high alert, prepared for the storm's arrival and the potential challenges it could bring. The snowfall persisted through Thursday, prompting major road closures in the Golan Heights and necessitating the closure of schools to ensure the safety of students and residents. The snowfall began in the early hours of Wednesday, initially gracing the highest peaks before spreading across the entire plateau. Even the Galilee Highlands experienced this rare display of winter weather. At Mount Hermon, Israel's tallest peak, 
snow depths reached impressive levels, with 15 cm accumulating at lower elevations and 25 cm at the summit. This led to the temporary closure of the local ski center, disappointing winter sports enthusiasts. As the day progressed, temperatures across Israel dropped significantly, accompanied by heavy rainfall and thunderstorms along the coastal plain. Flood warnings were issued for coastal areas and other vulnerable spots, extending wintry conditions. This recent weather phenomenon in Israel had a profound impact. Torrential rains over the weekend led to floods in various areas. Some residents found themselves trapped in vehicles while rising waters isolated an entire neighborhood in Lod. In Jerusalem, temperatures hovered between two and six degrees C, while Tel Aviv experienced slightly warmer conditions ranging from 10 to 14 degrees C. Overall, the snowstorm and subsequent weather conditions presented significant challenges across the country, affecting travel, daily routines, and safety. Snow is a rare event in Israel, especially in its central mountainous regions like Jerusalem. Each instance is a spectacle. In 2013, a major blizzard hit the area, leaving neighborhoods without power and covering Jerusalem with up to 30 centimeters of snow. This event was considered a once-in-a-century phenomenon with some areas south of the city receiving up to 90 centimeters of snow. The weather in the eastern Mediterranean is notoriously unpredictable. And while snowfall forecasts often generate excitement, the reality can vary significantly. Bringing the discussion to a close and highlighting the significance of this, of this event, we turn our attention to Mount Hermon. This snow-capped peak dominates Israel's ancient landscape, offering a breathtaking spectacle. Known as Jabal el Sheikh, or Snowy Mountain in Arabic, Mount Hermon holds a place of mystique and majesty in the biblical narrative, further emphasizing the importance of recent weather events in Israel's cultural and historical context. Beyond Mount Hermon lies a beacon of awe and reverence, with its three distinctive peaks perpetually cloaked in snow, a sight that endures for most of the year. Throughout biblical times, this majestic mountain was known by various names, including Syrian and Sinir, each symbolizing its grandeur. Its snow-covered crests glisten in the sunlight like a radiant breastplate, adding to its mystique. Mount Hermon's extensive range spans nearly 30 miles in length and 15 miles in width, underscoring its geographical significance, which is matched by its prominence in biblical narratives. Historically, the mountain served as the northernmost boundary of the land conquered by Joshua, with its territory later inherited by the tribe of Manasseh. However, Mount Hermon's importance transcends mere territorial markers. It has long been regarded as a site of worship and mystery since ancient times. Ancient sanctuaries dotted its peaks and base, attracting worshipers to its secluded heights. In the Bible, it is referred to as Baal Hermon, a place where the divine presence felt tangibly closer to the earth. Numerous biblical references attest to Mount Hermon's significance. The psalmist extolled its loftiness and beauty, employing it as a divine unity and blessing metaphor. King David likened the unity of God's people to the dew of Mount Hermon, portraying it as refreshing and life-giving, spreading from the north to the arid south. One of the most profound moments associated with Mount Hermon is the transfiguration of Jesus. While traditionally believed to have occurred on Mount Tabor, some scholars argue that the geographical context and the need for seclusion make Mount Hermon a compelling candidate for this miraculous event. The transfiguration where Jesus was revealed in his divine glory to Peter, James, and John serves as a testament to his identity as the Messiah. This sacred moment underscores the spiritual significance of Mount Hermon, elevating it beyond a mere geographical landmark to a site of profound spiritual importance. Israel is situated in a region abundant with water sources in neighboring countries, yet it lacks such grand water resources. Thank you, the primary source of hydration for Israel, the Sea of Galilee, is relatively modest. However, this scarcity isn't merely a geographical issue. It carries profound lessons in reliance and faith. Despite facing environmental challenges, Israel's reliance on divine rain fosters a unique bond between its people and their faith. This relationship is built on trust and hope, where even in times of sin and rebellion, there is a collective turning towards the heavens for mercy and sustenance. 
the significance of rain in Israel transcends the physical realm. It carries a spiritual weight. When rain falls, not only the earth rejoices, but also the hearts of the people. Rain is seen as a blessing from above, an act of divine compassion that nourishes both the land and the soul. Battle of Armageddon, the term Armageddon carries a rich historical legacy, intertwined with significant battles throughout history. This place has been the setting for major conflicts, ranging from ancient times to World War I. According to biblical prophecy, Armageddon will serve as the stage for a final battle between forces from Eastern and Western Eurasia, vying for global dominance. In this biblical narrative, the kings of the East, often interpreted as representing modern-day Russia and China, will launch an attack on Europe with a massive army numbering 200 million soldiers. This catastrophic event, predicted to result in the demise of a third of humanity, is anticipated to unfold on the Eurasian continent just before the return of Jesus. Another aspect of this prophecy, detailed in Daniel, double one, double 443, speaks of a ten-nation alliance forming in Central Europe, foretelling significant world-changing events. It depicts a conflict between the King of the South and the King of the North, symbolizing the European community facing threats from the South. The contemporary world reflects echoes of these prophecies, with ongoing tensions in the Middle East and Europe facing challenges from, from Islamic nations. Yet, amidst these tumultuous events, believers find solace in the belief that Jesus will ultimately triumph over these forces, offering hope. Revelation 19 vividly depicts future events, depicting powerful forces assembling for war against a divine figure mounted on a horse, setting the stage for a monumental showdown. Revelation prophecies the capture and punishment of the beast and the false prophet, indicating that despite deceiving many, they will ultimately face divine judgment. Turning to Ezekiel's predictions in chapters 38, 39, we glimpse a future where nations, including Russia and China, will launch an attack on Israel. However, the scriptures assure believers that God will intervene and emerge victorious, demonstrating that those who instigate wars will ultimately witness the true power of God. Isaiah 59, 8 emphasizes that genuine peace and strength stem from adhering to divine principles rather than relying solely on military might. Battle of Gog and Magog. In the Old Testament, there are stories about battles and wars. One such story is in Exodus 17, where the Amalekites attacked Moses and the Israelites. Moses instructed Joshua to select men for the fight while he prayed with his hands raised. As long as Moses kept his hands up, they were winning. Another battle is recounted in Judges 7, where Gideon fought against the Midianites. God told Gideon to send most of his soldiers home, leaving only 300. This might have seemed strange, but God wanted to show that victory would come from him, not from human strength. In both stories, victory came through unusual means. In Exodus, it relied on Moses' raised hands, while in Judges, it was through a reduced army to highlight God's power over numbers. After Gideon's 300 men created confusion in the Midianite camp, the enemies turned on each other. However, these won't be the patterns of wars in the end times. When Jesus was on earth, his disciples asked about signs of his return and the end of the world. In Matthew 24, 4, 8, Jesus warned about deception, false prophets, and wars as signs preceding the end. He stressed that these events were necessary but not conclusive signs of the end. Jesus emphasized deception as the first sign, warning against false teachers who would mislead many. He reiterated this warning, highlighting its significance. The second sign mentioned was wars and rumors of wars which are prevalent in today's world, aligning with the prophesied signs. According to Jesus, these events mark the beginning of sorrows, suggesting more to come. The signs include conflicts between nations, famines, diseases, earthquakes, and persecution. These signs indicate the approach of the end times, according to Jesus' teachings. The Battle of Gog and Magog is also mentioned in the Bible prophecies described in Ezekiel 38 and 39. This event is widely debated but is generally understood as an apocalyptic war marking the beginning of the Messianic era. Gog and Magog symbolize the enemies against whom God will fight this decisive battle. This battle is a mysterious event in biblical prophecy, 
with scholars holding varying opinions on its details. Gog is commonly interpreted as a ruler of the land of Magog, but the specifics of who is involved, what exactly happens, and how it unfolds are areas of contention. Scholars disagree on the timing, location, and participants of this invasion. Some believe it will occur just before the rapture and the onset of the seven-year tribulation period. Others place it between the rapture and the tribulation, or during the middle of the tribulation. Yet another perspective suggests it will happen shortly before the second coming of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, God intervenes to rescue his people when Gog and his army attempt to attack Israel. The intervention is described in detail in Ezekiel 38, 1, 18, 22. When Gog advances against Israel, a massive earthquake will shake the entire region, affecting the land, sea, sky, animals, and people. Mountains will crumble, steep places will collapse, and walls will fall. God declares that he will bring a sword against Gog throughout his mountains, causing internal strife among Gog's forces. Judgment will be executed through pestilence, bloodshed, flooding rain, hailstorms, fire, and brimstone. The supernatural manner in which God intervenes demonstrates his power and decisiveness in protecting his people. So, what do you think of the new terrifying end-time events in Israel? Comment below and subscribe for more.